Good morning, everyone. It's Makeda Valletta. Good morning, good morning. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm recording this video in two places, on my IG Live, and um, I'll be replacing it on to YouTube. So I hope you all are doing well this morning. Um, today I want to talk about a topic that was, was highly disturbing to me. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this R. Kelly documentary. Um, and I have watched uh, some, most of it, what has come on. And it's so disturbing, and it's like, um, when do I begin? First of all, um, I just want to say that I um, have never been molested or raped or anything like that, and I'm thankful for that. Um, but in my life, in the work that I've done, I have noticed that I'm a minority. It seems like... Um, it seems like most people, I can't even just say women, because a lot of men too, have been sexually abused. Um, and the disturbing thing about, about it is, is how we consistently see how men in positions of power get away with things. Um, and, you know, in the past couple of years with this Me Too movement and all the stuff that's been coming out with Bill Cosby and, you know, all these people and everybody thinking that it's a conspiracy and... The black community is especially a goddamn shame because um, the black community, not my family, I'm a black community, but so many people in the black community always want to act like the black man's a victim. Everybody's trying to attack the black man. And that shit gets in my nerves. Um, I have a black father. I have a, a black twin brother. So I care about black men. Um, I know about the struggles um, of being a black man. And I care. Um, thankfully, I have a dad who is, he stands up for women. Um, I, my dad is the first feminist I've ever known. And, um, and so I'm not, I don't come from that kind of black man. My dad, you know, was involved in the civil rights movement. He's a journalist all my life. And, um, so he was very much for black, um, you know, for black people in general, you know. Um, but he also cared about black women. Black women is something he cared about very much. And a lot of black men who are in um, the who are in the civil rights movement, even Black Panthers, all of that stuff, a lot of them were very machismo and could care less about the rights of women. And I'm talking about black women. There were a lot of black women who were being raped in the Black Panther Party, um, you know. And, and and I and nobody cared because when those women complained, what they were told was, "Oh, you're messing with the greater." you know, uh, picture, you know, the bigger issue is this, this movement. So they didn't think that was important. They silenced those women. My dad told me that a lot of the men who were involved in the movement, because my dad was, um, a part of the organization that strategically put the Black Panthers together. He was a black revolutionary and his mentor was a woman named Queen Mother Moore, who a lot of people don't know. Um, she's from Louisiana, but lived in Harlem at the time. Well, he was, my dad was in Philly when he was in his early 20s and, and met her. She became his mentor. And he told me that most men in the movement didn't want to hear shit a woman had to say. But they did listen to her, but they didn't really respect women. So, black women, you know, black women a lot of times will fight harder for black men than black men will for us. I, I, I see black women making all kinds of sacrifices for the black man, but then... You know, black men don't protect us. Same thing with, and I'm not saying all black men, but generally speaking, a lot of a lot of you guys are falling off, and it's it's a, it's a damn shame, you know. And again, it's not the men that I come from, but it is uh, very much the case. So now, and, and with, okay, with the R. Kelly thing, um, or you had this issue in Florida in McDonald's where this this woman got beat up, and all those men just stood there and did nothing. And you know what? I've been in a situation like that before. I didn't get yoked up and beat up that bad. But I remember way back, this is like back in like 2004, 2005, I was at an industry party in New York and um, uh, I don't know if it was somebody from the Roots DJing or somebody from Dead Press, something like that. So it was all these so-called conscious people. And I remember this dude, he kept following um, my friend around. Like he kept, you know, following, every time we moved someplace, he'd be all up on her. So we kept moving away from him. He'd be right there again. And then finally, he started messing with me. And I remember this dude, like, I kept moving away from him, too, because I didn't want any issues. And then he touched my hair. And when he touched my hair, I was like, don't fucking touch me. I told him that, dead ass, don't fucking touch me. And I moved away from him again. Then me and my friend are standing, we're talking, 
And there's a guy behind me. I turn around to talk to him. And then when I turned back around, this dude was like this close to my face. And I said to him, can you please back up? You're too close. And when I said that, the dude went off on me, started screaming in my face. Like he was like this close to me, screaming, spitting on me like while he's screaming. And I could see him reaching in his pocket. And so since I was so close to him, I, I didn't know what he was doing. I knew he was crazy, so I didn't say anything. I just was quiet, let him scream while he's spitting, while he's talking. And then he actually spit on me for real. He was like, oh, and he spit in my face. When dude did that, I fucking blacked out and lost my mind. And I got some strength from somewhere. And Oh, mind you, mind you, there was a bunch of big men standing around me, okay? Big black men. And this guy wasn't a big dude. He was shorter than me. He was little. But even a little dude is, is, strong, is a strong dude when it comes to when you compare it to a woman. But he, I was surrounded by like four or five big black dudes. And they all just st stood there watching him in my face, yelling, screaming, harassing me. They watched it. When he actually hopped up and spit in my face, I blacked the fuck out, got some strength from somewhere, and I pushed him like with all my might. And he went for lying. Because while he was talking to me, I was thinking to myself, when he turns around and walks away, I'm going to kick his ass in the back because I'm a kicker. So that's what I was thinking to myself. But I was just quiet, waiting for him to stop screaming and turn around. But when he spit in my face, I couldn't even wait that long. And I got some strength from somewhere to push his ass. He flew back a few feet onto a table, over the table, right? Shit fell onto him. And I remember grabbing an empty alcohol bottle. And I was holding it, like, right, by, right behind my leg. I was holding it because he was on the floor. And I was like, if he charges me, I'm going to hit him with this shit. And one of my friends was like, you can't hit him with that. You might kill him. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not fighting a dude. If he comes at me, I'm hitting him with this bottle, period. So when he... Um, got up and started to try to come at me. That's when all the dudes grabbed him and took him out. Then they all came up to me like, oh my God, I, you know, squeezing my little skinny arm. I can't believe you did that. I was going to do this. I was going to do that. I was going to show them what it could have bullshit. And I couldn't believe that I was surrounded by a bunch of men who saw this shit happen and didn't do anything. Now, I'm not the kind of woman who wants to get a man in a fight. You know, I have, like I told you, I have a twin brother. So in the early 2000s, when I was in college and men were super disrespectful, I didn't even want my brother to, to come with me to a party because I'm like, if he sees a man disrespect me like that, my brother's going to lose his mind. And my, my brother's 6'2", 230, and he has, he's a sweetheart, but he has a bad temper, especially if somebody messes with his precious um, twin sister, you know what I'm saying, or his mom or something like that. And I never would want my brother to get arrested, get in a fight, get in trouble, um, because of me. So I, you know, am aware of that. And I tend to like, I never wanted him to come with me now. So I'm not the kind of woman and I've had beef with dudes, you know, um, in my life and I've never wanted to involve another man. Like, Oh, go beat him up. No, you know, and I'm also not trying to get into a fight with a dude neither, but I'm just saying. So going back to this R. Kelly thing. First, I want to say that everybody I know in Chicago, um, for years, you know, I live in Chicago now. I'm from New York, but I'm lived in Chicago for two years now. Um, to, today, my two year anniversary. Um, but even before I lived here, and I would come visit here. Everybody I knew from Chicago would tell me. Every black person would tell me they they seen R. Kelly sitting in front of high schools. You know, even when he was famous. That's like any, any black person in Chicago from the south side could tell you that, right? And to me, and and the thing, and I know when I was in high school. A lot of my teenage friends are messing with grown men. I never wanted to mess with grown men, so I never did that. I always wanted to stay with my age group. And once I was out of high school, I wasn't trying to mess with somebody in high school. So I don't get, you know, I know a lot of men who mess with older women and girls that mess with older men. That seems to happen a lot. I was never about that life, right? I don't know what that's about. And, and for a minute, I wanted to say maybe those girls come from broken homes. You know, a lot of times it's that because, I mean... I'm very close to both my parents, but my dad was huge in my life. You know, I talk about him all the time. And my dad really taught me um, the tricks of men and not to fall for that and don't let a man control you. Fuck that. So me, even if I get, if I go through a breakup and I get sad, I feel stupid because my dad was always like, fuck that shit. You are the shit. Anybody who has you is lucky. And don't sit around crying over some dude that doesn't give a fuck about you. So that was like embedded in me so like my self-esteem but I just when I was a teenager I just was not trying to be grown like I just wasn't I wasn't trying to sneak into clubs I wasn't cutting school and smoking weed I wasn't trying to drink I just wasn't doing that I was into my schoolwork and playing sports I was a basketball player I was a dancer and then I started running track and I was like an A B student right and I was focused on going to college and just goody goody you know 
I wasn't even focused on sex. And I had a high school boyfriend, like, my sophomore to my senior year. That one boyfriend wasn't cheating on him, wasn't thinking about that, was too fucking busy. And I wasn't having sex. And I remember guys trying to pressure me to have sex. I remember this dude that looked like Nas, who lived in, 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 in Harlem, um, in the polo grounds. I had a huge crush on him. And Nas was the shit back then. And he was pressuring me like crazy to have sex. I didn't care. All my friends had sex. I was just like, whatever. But I started watching porn at like nine. And I started masturbating when I was like younger than that, you know, humping my female best friend and masturbating, having orgasms, not knowing what that was, but I was. But at the same time, so even though I had discovered porn and even though um, I was masturbating, I still was not thinking about having sex with people. Like, I still was like, look, I'm not losing my virginity before I'm 16. You know, and even when I did, I um, was only messing with my high school boyfriend. I wasn't trying to be grown. Now, so I'm saying that to say, that a lot of teenage girls, and I and, and I don't care what city it is, because I saw it in New York, and all my friends didn't have didn't come from broken homes. A lot of them had a mother and a father, um, but they chose to do that. They willingly chose to do that. And in New York, it's very easy. Um, this light is all crazy. In New York, our our abortion laws. If you're if you're a minor, if you're under eighteen, you can get an abortion in New York for free without anybody knowing. I've never had an abortion, but I've always been pro-choice. And I've always um, been involved in that movement. And in New York, you don't have to get your parents' permission. You can do it. You don't need anyone to drive you. Like, if you're in a small town, you need someone to take you to this place. Everybody in the town knows your family. You know, then you need your parents' signature. So I knew girls in high school that got pregnant, but they all had abortions. New York was not about that teenage pregnancy, having a baby life. You know, they got pregnant, they had abortions. But people I know from other places, you know, like in Miami, even in Chicago, people had a lot of girls having babies in high school. Um, and I just feel like, even though it is completely wrong, it's completely wrong for an adult to take advantage of a teenager, but I will say, I will say that a 15-year-old and a 16-year-old, maybe even a 14-year-old girl knows what they're doing, like they do. Um, when I was 14, 15, and 16, I knew what I was doing, and so did my friends. And they purposely wanted to deal with these old men. So that's part of the problem, okay? And nobody wants to talk about that. Because I know people in Miami, I know people, they'd be like, they was 14 with grown-ass men driving them to school and picking them up. And that seems to be the norm all over the country. You know, I'm the rarity in, in the fact that I didn't want to mess with grown-ass men. But a lot of girls do that, and they do know what they're doing. Because when I was 15 and 16, I knew what I was doing. Right. Okay. Put that aside. But that is something that needs to be discussed. Um, the fact that R. Kelly did this shit in front of all these people, the fact that there were so many witnesses and even the people on this documentary who are talking about, you know, what they saw. I'm like, somebody should slap the shit out of you. Like, how could you have seen Like, I don't understand how they don't get in trouble. Like, how, how are these people not up for charges? How do you see a grown ass man? bringing 13, 14, 15, 16 year old girls around, all these underage girls around, you see it in front of your face and you just turn a blind eye. Or the dude who said that he helped uh, uh, him marry Aaliyah and she looked terrified and Aaliyah was looking at him. People talk about karma and shit coming back around. I don't know if I really believe in that because a lot of people who do evil shit and nothing seems to ever happen to them. And there are a lot of people who do good things, who are good people, and it's like, fucked up shit's always happening. Hold on, let me move my camera, this light. So I don't know if I believe, um, I don't know if I believe in all that karma, but what I do know, if there is such a thing as karma, what fucked up thing is about to happen to these people? Because they seem fine. And I just don't understand how they can be fine with themselves. I don't understand how they can be fine with the law knowing that they were present and helped in this situation. And the fact that even though, like, I mean, we all heard about R. Kelly's um, accusations over the years, but I wasn't, like, super tuned into it. I did hear from Chicago people constantly that he was known to sit in front of high schools, even when he was famous. Um, we knew about the Aaliyah thing, but I was, I was young back then, so I wasn't, and I was like, you know, I wasn't really investigating it, you know. Um, and so you hear these rumors. The, the, the tape, when that tape came out, maybe I was in high school, and people were looking at it, but I was focused on other shit. So I was never being, like, investigating or paying attention to it that hard. Um, I do love R. Kelly's music, you know. And 
as horrible as he is, I still like his music. And uh, I like Bill Cosby's, uh, The Cosby Show, you know? I think Bill Cosby is a fucking sleaze. Fuck him. Let him die a miserable death, okay? Let him, let his fucking soul rot in hell. Let him be a tortured soul. Fuck Bill Cosby. But I still like The Cosby Show. So, and I would still watch The Cosby Show. But, I, so I can separate the person from the art, you know? I'm not, you know, you got fans who don't want to see their, 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 their artist or their athlete as doing drugs and doing bad things because they're such a fan. I'm nobody's fan to that extent, you know what I'm saying, um, where I'm going to turn a blind eye. Like, as a sports scientist, I know a lot of athletes use drugs. That's known, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't want to believe their favorite athlete is doping up because they just can't believe. I ain't like that. I'm nobody's fan. Fan stands for fanatic, where I'm just not going to see shit. R. Kelly... For anybody to be trying to defend him and act like he's innocent and all this is set up against him and all they're trying to come for the black man is a fucking idiot. And I want what I want to say, I, I, what I want to say, I don't really want to say because it's messed up to the other, you know, any other people that would be a victim. But I feel like sometimes the only way they can understand that is if somebody close to them, their daughter their mother or themselves was a victim. But even then, they still may not understand it because as we see, a lot of people, when they go through this and they tell people in their family, their families don't believe them. The other thing, that church shit, I'm sorry, okay? I wasn't raised in the church. I was not raised with the Bible and religion in my face. I was not molested. My parents protected me, you know what I'm saying? As a, as a um, they, they, they protected who I was around. And I hear a lot of people say they never did sleepovers. I did sleepovers, but my parents let me sleep over at people's houses whose parents had some goddamn sense, who they knew. You know what I'm saying? And my grandmother, I remember growing up, every time um, I'd watch like a Lifetime movie with my grandmother or something, and you would see a, a, a kid get molested and somebody would threaten them and tell them, don't tell your parents or I'm, this is going to happen to you. I remember watching stuff like that with my grandmother, and she would always say to me, Makeda. If somebody ever touches you inappropriately, and you have to tell a kid what inappropriate is, no one's supposed to be touching your genitals, okay? You need to speak to them about that. They need to know that is not okay. Nobody should be doing that. Not your cousin, not your father, not your brother, nobody. And if it happens, always know that you can tell me. My grandmother said, I don't care who it is. Tell me, tell your parents I don't care how they threaten you or what they say. Now, on the flip side, when I was a kid, which is, is pretty normal, I was also highly sexual. Like I told you, I, I found, uh, uh, see, I, I hope that my dad never sees this video, but I did find, find his porn collection when I was nine and um, used to watch it when he wasn't around and, and when um, I was in, like in the summers, I'd be at my grandmother's house. And, um, in the summers I'd be at my grandmother's house and she had cable, she had Showtime, HBO. I would go look in the TV guide, remember TV guides? And I would look for all the movies that had nudity in it because I just wanted to see naked women. I just wanted to see naked grown women. I didn't care about seeing naked men or little girls. It was, it was like, because I was a little girl, but it was grown women. I like to see butt naked, right? So I used to seek that. Um, and I would have like... Sexual fantasies, but not actually sexual intercourse because I did not really know what that was. And I, like I said, I didn't want to have sex. I was very adamant about, no, I'm not having sex, but I was sexual. And I was um, humping my best friend, female, all the time and having orgasms and didn't even realize something was wrong with that until I did. And I said, okay, I can't just be doing this any and everywhere when I feel like it. So when I think about how that's normal for a kid to be that way, for kids to masturbate, touch their genitals, have these sexual feelings and curiosity, when you think about the fact that that's normal, and then you think about the fact that if you put them around, if a predator is around them, how a predator can take severe advantage of them and then fuck their head up for the rest of their life. Because one thing I can say is that sexual abuse seems to be the worst form of abuse. Um, people like the, the classes that I've been teaching for years, my central strength training class, um, it seems like almost a lifetime of trying to heal from sexual abuse. And some people seem like they never heal. Um, I've, I've had a lot of experience of working with women with it, um, because talk therapy shows that it doesn't actually really heal you. It just helps you understand what your problem is. 
but you're not necessarily healed from it. You need deeper work than that, body work, all kinds of things. And so my in my sexual strength training class and the things I teach with the egg help to address that. I've seen it help a lot of women with their trauma issues. But over the years, I would wonder, well, what, what, what do we do for men that have trauma issues? Like, what is the equivalent for um, a, a man who has been sexually traumatized? Because I know that a woman putting an egg inside of her and doing nothing, just that itself can have a lot of healing properties with balancing her energy fields and dissolving some of that trauma that's in her body. That just happens, even if she's not conscious of it. But I'm like, what is the male equivalent? And I don't know. I've been thinking for years because I've heard some horrific things for men. And for some reason, I attracted a lot. Like, it seems like all the like relationships I've gotten into with men, or I've been in relationships with men who've been sexually abused. Um, I've heard men tell me, and women, tell me very disturbing stories. Where the kind of disturbing story that you don't even know what to say. Like, you have no idea. And then I wonder, why does this come to me? Because I can't relate. So it's not like I have this experience and I can give them some words of encouragement. I, I haven't. And the stuff is so disturbing that I don't even know what to tell you to do or if there's anything you can do. When somebody tells you that their mother was forcing them to have sex with their dad, or one girl that I, I used to work with told me that her father used to eat her out and told her, it's just disgusting. So when someone tells you something like that, I don't even know what to say. But the fact is that I feel very strongly about protecting women, women's empowerment. And see, a lot of things, okay, I have so many things to say. With R. Kelly, people kept saying that, um, like, oh, he sung all these highly sexual songs, but then he made I Believe I Can Fly, and how can somebody do these two things? First of all, and then they're confused because he's involved in a church. It's like, are you people stupid? I didn't even grow up in church, but I know that church has the biggest pervs. How many fucking sexual scandals and stuff have you seen out of churches and religious institutions? I feel like everybody I know that molested was grew, grew up in a religious family, okay? And that religious family didn't protect them. So for me, people can believe what they want, but I don't... To me, people who are really churchy... The preacher's daughter. The preacher's daughter always got the worst problems, be doing the worst shit. Why is it? You know, you had that, that Eddie Long shit down in Atlanta. All these people don't want to believe, oh, my pastor couldn't be doing that. Religious people are brainwashed. You can't think for yourself and you can't see shit. You know what I'm saying? You protect these, these pastors or because someone says, Jesus, I'm praying and all that. Fuck your praying. Let me tell you something. Matriarchal traditions. It's, it's these patriarchal religions. And I could say, Talk about Christianity that teaches people, oh, you can sin and you'll be forgiven. You just got to repent your sins or whatever the fuck they teach people. Bullshit. In matriarchal traditions, that is not okay. It is not okay that you can just do whatever you want in this world and just because you apologize, oh, your sins will be forgiven. No. In matriarchal traditions, when you're dealing with goddesses, you have goddesses of justice who will wreak havoc on your life for doing something wrong, for being a wrong, fucked up person. That's what that is. You know what I'm saying? So this idea that, oh, you go to church... Or you want to pray to Jesus. You want to quote Bible quotes. So now you can do some horrible shit. Tell about let's pray. Like when R. Kelly, they said when that tape came out, when it was about to come out, he was telling whoever worked for him, oh, I need to pray, I need to pray, and do pray for him. Fuck his praying. Let's stop on his prayers. R. Kelly has a daughter who's trans boy, right, who wants to be a boy. And with trans, like as a sacred sexual educator, I know there's always been third genders, okay? And even in the trans world, you have people who might be born with ambiguous genitalia. But when people start telling you that they were born in the wrong body, I'm sorry. I think that there is something mentally going on. And a lot of times, self-hate, a lot of times they have an idea of what it is to be a woman or what it is to be a man. And so they, they, they may not want to be the sex that they are. And they think that trying to be the other sex will make their life easier. They, their idea of what that is. That's really what I think a lot of it is. I'm not saying it's the, you know all trans people, but a lot of it is. Now, with R. Kelly, his daughter wanting to be a boy, I think that has everything to do with his pervy ways. You know what I'm saying? He so bad that he made his daughter not want to be a girl. Who knows if he molested his own daughter? He could have. You know what I'm saying? But if you see a man who just is abusing girls, you know, like what kind of father is that? A father is supposed to protect. A man is supposed to protect. You know, my father protected me, my father still protects me. You know? My dad still gives me um knives and razors and tells me how to cut a dude and says to me if a motherfucker ever puts his hands on you I want him to be running the one running for help and not you 
you know, always. And my dad taught me about how dudes be on some bullshit and blah, blah, blah. And of course, it can't be, you know, you still get tricked, but I'm just saying. So the thing is, the fact that, you know, a lot of these parents, people say, where are the parents? That's a good question. Um, it seems to me, I'm not sure, but I heard that Aaliyah's mom was denying things, which is crazy because, you know, um, and then Sparkle's niece, Sparkle's uh, niece, the mom uh, also was denying it and getting mad at Sparkle and saying that Sparkle is driving the family's name through the mud. So these people are more concerned with their reputation than protecting their children. There are too many people having kids in this world who are awful parents who are screwing up their children and they're creating damaged monsters in this world. Um, some people need to be sterilized. They shouldn't be having no damn kids at all. You know, and that's just the, 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 the real for real truth. But all this stuff, for all these years, everybody seeing and knowing what R. Kelly was doing, allowing it to happen, not protecting these girls, all these women who got slandered, not paid attention to, that's exactly why I don't want to hear men complain. I don't want to hear it. Like, even the other day when I posted something about a man treating his woman like a queen and cooking for her, cleaning and get, making her come, and a lot of men got offended. Oh, she better be doing that. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, first of all, the shit didn't say that she didn't do shit. It didn't say that. It just said, can you treat her like a queen sometimes? What do you think treating her like a queen is? You don't think that cooking, cleaning sometimes, and making her come is a nice thing to do for the woman that you're... Why would you get upset about that? If somebody wrote, if it was the other way around and it said the shit, you know, it's like, it's like how much do women do that in the world? How much do women cater to men, you know? And then men are, are just allowed to be these sexual uh, sickos that can get away with the fuck ever. And then a woman just stands in her sexual power and has sex with who she wants to have and doesn't let a man control her sex life and then she's a hoe. And you got all these problems. But then you don't have a problem with the men who are doing shit like that. Everybody just turns a blind eye. And that's a, that, 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 that's the thing that just, it, it, sometimes it makes me not even want to fight for black men because black men don't fight for us. But the thing that makes me not go to that place is the fact that I do have um, a, a father who um, fights for black women, period. And I do have a twin brother. And so I have black men in my life who I care about, who I fight for, who I care for who also care for black women. So because of that, I can't completely write black men off and be like, this is some bullshit. But I'm less inclined, you know, to jump on a Black Lives Matter uh, protest and, and train when something happens to a black